New questions being raised today in the debate over global warming. Last week, stolen emails from top researchers were posted online. Global warming skeptics saying those emails suggest that scientists may have worked together to manipulate global warming data. Defenders say those emails are being used out of context. With both sides now, we start with Chris Horner, a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute, also the author of Red Hot Lies, How Global Warming Alarmists Use Threats, Fraud, and Deception to Keep You Misinformed. And on the other side. Also joining us, eco-entrepreneur, conservationist, and co-founder of the Clean Economy Network, Howard Gould. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us this morning. Uh, Chris, I'd like to start with you. Do you feel like uh, these emails in some way substantiate what you've been arguing for years? That's precisely what they are. They're being miscast as revelations. In fact, they are all affirmations, none out of context, all posted in full context, including entire email threads affirming the specifics of the actions that we have been describing, including falsifying data, including falsifying the data of the entire premise for the IPCC process, the Kyoto Treaty, the Kyoto 2 Treaty, cap and trade, EPA's actions, and so on, all of which, for the U.S. perspective, must be stayed until the truth is outed here. We do need an investigation if this is only possibly being taken out of context and, and there are some uh, discretion over what they might mean. In fact, they are affirming everything a lot of people, including many, many scientists, including some in the refereed literature, have been making quite clear for years is going on. Well, Howard, let me give you a chance to respond there. Do you feel like uh, these are being taken out of context? Do you feel like there has been a good debate about global warming with skeptics also welcome to the table? What's your take? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that we've discussed this issue at nauseum now, and it is pretty much understood that global warming is anthropogenic or man-made, and there are a few people out there that are still, uh, you know, holdouts out there, and it's, it's very, you know, kind of ironic that they come out with this now right before the Copenhagen uh, meetings next month. And, uh, you know, I think it's trying to affect something or, or affect some sort of progress that may be made at that meeting next month. Well, Howard, some of these emails go back to 1996, and the folks uh, who are upset about how this has turned out say that's just the attitude they're worried about, the fact that anybody who is a skeptic or takes issue with the uh, global warming community is sort of sidelined and said, well, there's only a few people who believe this, and they say they've been shut out of uh, being able to publish articles and take things uh, to uh, various conferences, those kinds of things. Are you saying, you know, it's a smaller group that's being represented, or it's just not true? I I'm saying it's probably a very, very small group of scientists relative to those that are saying that it is actually occurring. Um, you know, are they being shut out of uh, being able to participate in different conferences? I, I don't know that for, for a fact, but, you know, I mean, I think that there are other avenues that voices can be heard, and these guys don't seem to have a lot of credible data that says that, that what, you know, if you have a hundred doctors telling you one thing and, and five of them telling you something else, you kind of go with, with what, uh, you know, what the masses are saying here. And I think it's widely understood globally. You know, maybe still there are some holdouts here in the United States, but I think globally it's understood that climate change is anthropogenic and man-made. And I think we're seeing we even more effects down, of that Sheena, now. Let me clarify what these are, okay? This isn't information as the, the individual is indicating that just somehow was sprung now. In fact, it's just as likely to have come from a whistleblower, someone on the inside with a conscience. All of this information is subject to the UK's Freedom of Information Act. All of it has been under request for years. The most recent request, after they ran out of excuses, was, we lost the data. Well, that's implausible beyond belief and also would cause a stay in the process until they found what the dog supposedly ate. So someone has forced cooperation with the UK's Freedom of Information Act, revealing this, what, 12, 13-year string of evidence of seeking to not keep people out of conferences, but out of the refereed literature. Well, I think that I think results. after 12, not basic, not just sort of random marginal results, but the premise, the premise, this hockey stick. They talked about hiding the decline in temperatures of the last half of the last century. That's not what other people are just saying. Yes, I found that too. But Chris, other it seems to me after 12 it. years so of data, only at the margins, people are disagreeing, but they disagree according to their own words, and now they can't deny well, it anymore. Well, after 12 and years of data, the Wall Street Journal, really. the best that they can come up with in the Wall Street Journal is that some guy did a magic trick on some of the climate numbers. You're telling me out of out of 12 years of data, that's the best that they can come up with for debunking climate change? Well, how are you, you know, ask you 60, this. Wait, wait, uh, you, here's here's the threat. About, there are 62 just a megs released, 100 more to come. All right, Howard, let me ask you, uh, this idea that if one in five scientists disagrees, 
Should they just go away? I mean, should their voice be silenced in this debate just because you say that most people now generally accept that there's Absolutely global warming not. that's man-made? Absolutely not. I don't think that they should go away. I think science is, should have no bias at all. But the fact is that they're pissed off because their voice isn't being heard because it's not credible. You know, I mean, a after a while, you got to go, well, look, these guys are wrong. And, you know, this is... If science should go on, Howard, shouldn't these people be removed from the process? Can you at least stipulate to that? Should who, who be removed from the if process? If not, this is a religion because nothing can disprove it and everything's acceptable. No, and I, I have to agree. I think that, you know what, these people have a voice that should be heard. But, I mean, the fact is that you can't, you can't blame the people them because be identifying people, people aren't listening because it's not true. Should data be taken out of the process? Should the people, having proven now, falsified the data, be taken out of the process? The people who falsified the data? If it is without question acceptable. proven that they falsified some sort of data at that university in England, then yes, proven. maybe that so person we, should so be removed. So we need an investigation. Howard right, and Chris, I agree we need an investigation. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely this. agree. I mean, if there, there should be some investigation. Good. Look, if they broke the law or, or they're hiding something, then that is wrong. But the fact is that I the think what they've picked they out of broke this, the law. They describe how to break the law. All right, Chris, let me ask you this, though. We're, we're getting a portion of emails. We've got 1,000 emails, some 2,000 other documents. Uh, people are claiming they're out of context. There may be a lot of other emails that we don't know about. Uh, any chance that there is uh, something to exonerate some of the folks here? And what do you make of the charge that this is questionable timing? Uh, it's, it's questionable timing. They've been fighting releasing this for years. It's released now for reasons we don't know who got it. Was it a whistleblower? Was it a hacker? They, we, this is called a random sample, 62 megs out of 165 megs. So, of course, more is coming. You also have data. You have codes. We're still going through it. But the bottom line is, Shannon, would we have heard a defense if a real one existed? Yes, we would have heard it by now. And instead, what we have seen are, are claims that, well, using the word trick is actually a very common uh, application in science, although this is the first we've ever heard of it. And hiding the decline is just really describing something else. The plain meaning is described as the implausible, and the implausible is described as the reasonable meaning. If that's your first, best, and apparently last defense, these people have been caught with their pants at their ankles, another 100 megs are coming, a real investigation that Howard has just agreed to shall ensue now, and all processes should be stayed. Kyoto 2, cap and trade, EPA's regulatory push, all of the energy rationing and tax schemes premised precisely on the research proven falsified in this material must be stayed. All right, Howard, I want to give you the final word here. No, I absolutely agree with Chris that, I mean, they should have an investigation. I mean, if stuff was falsified, we need to know about it. I mean, the fact is that I, I don't believe so because there's so many models that are coming out now that's showing that climate change is occurring. I mean, ocean acid, acidification is now coming out to show there's too much CO2 there as well. It, you know, I mean, the, the, the models and the science is completely overwhelming. So if somebody falsified it, I don't, need to, I don't know why they, they needed to falsify it because there's plenty of evidence to show that it is occurring. But I, but I do agree that if somebody did falsify it, they should be, you know, have to be um, some sort of investigation should, right. should occur. All right, gentlemen, we'll leave you on your one Models point of agreement evidence, about a, a potential investigation. We'll leave it there with agreement. Chris Horner and Howard Gould, thank you both very much for a spirited debate. Thank you. Took it eight minutes, but they got there, Shannon. They did. Well done. <laughs> Bream.